If you feel like you never see progress in your workouts or you feel like you've hit a plateau, this video is completely for you. Welcome friends, my name is Hannah. I created this channel to dive into all aspects of what it truly means to be well and to thrive. Today's video is something that I recently discovered within the past two to three months and it literally has changed the game for me. Okay, so today we are specifically talking about cycle syncing for workouts. And I'm also gonna pepper in a little bit of my journey, my story, the mistakes mistakes that I made and really important tips that I've learned along the way. Make sure you watch to the end because I'm sharing three tips that literally made such a big difference in my fitness journey. You won't want to miss them, promise. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know what we have to start with. We have to throw ourselves a little dance party. This really is one, it's just fun and that's totally half the reason I do it. But two, there's science behind it. When we get our bodies moving, when we build our energy levels, it helps our memory. It helps us retain information better. Okay, so stand up, throw yourself a little dance party, get a little movement in, and then we'll get started. So I've had a lot of ups and downs in my fitness journey, starting out really in college, not knowing anything, being embarrassed at the gym, not knowing the machines to use, or definitely not even probably using dumbbells or anything like that, and really not seeing results because, of course, I didn't know anything, I didn't have proper form, I didn't know how to build weights, I didn't know even specific workouts to do. Fast forward to, I think in grad school, I really messed up my back. I shared this in previous videos, so I'm not gonna go into it. You can click on this video if you wanna learn a little bit more about that background. But because I hurt my back so badly, I was not able to work. I wasn't able to work out for months and it took me a long time to recover. That was a huge wake up call for me to really, really focus on the importance of form over weight. And I cannot stress this enough. This is just a side note, a little rant. Please, please, please focus on proper form before you even build up your weights. If you're doing really heavy weight, but improper form, one, you're eventually gonna hurt your yourself and two, you're not going to see the best results. So it's not even worth it to try to do heavy weight just to look cool or whatever reason we use a lot of weight. A few months ago, my back acted up for the third time and I wasn't able to work out. I was in a lot of pain, spent a lot of time on the couch. And through that pain, I learned two huge things. One, the importance, again, relearned this tip, the importance of warming up and cooling down. I cannot stress enough the importance of stretching. That's why I started this YouTube series with a warm up video and then a cool down video based in science from physical therapist expertise because if you are not stretching those muscles out and properly warming them up, again, eventually you will get hurt. And the second thing that I came across through that pain and dark time is cycle syncing. If you're unfamiliar with the term, cycle syncing is basically just lining up specific workouts, diet, foods to eat, and lifestyle habits and actions with your cycle, with your period cycle. One of the biggest reasons that I love this and I truly believe that it works so well is because we are cyclical. As humans, we go through cycles. Just like we have the four seasons, fall, winter, spring, summer, we go through seasons in our lives where things change, where certain things don't that used to work for us just don't work for us anymore. And coming from someone who is inherently very regimented, super type A personality, this is one of the biggest lessons that I've learned in my life is it's okay to cycle into things and cycle back out of them. It's okay to switch up our workout routines. We don't have to do the same thing every single day over and over. In fact, it's healthier and we see better results when we cycle. I promise you, even the most consistent people you see on social media take breaks, switch up their routine. So we're gonna walk through each of the four cycles that we go through each month, and I'm gonna share some examples of workouts and exercises, types of exercises that I use in each cycle. So day one of our cycle starts in the menstrual phase. This is when we start bleeding. When we're in the menstruation period, our hormones are at our lowest. That's why we typically feel 
tired, we feel like maybe not socializing, we feel like just kind of getting cozy up and home and snuggling up with a blanket. This is the winter phase, as I like to call it. It's time for hibernation, it's time to relax, time to slow down. So the best exercises that we can utilize in this phase is number one, rest. If you feel tired, if your body is telling you to rest, this is the time to listen to it. We should always listen to our bodies if they're telling us to rest. But you might feel a little bit more tired during this time of the month, and that's okay. Some things that I've really enjoyed doing in this phase is walking, getting outside. I do a lot of grounding at this time. So getting outside on the bare earth in some grass if you are able to. For me, living in a city, I'm not always able to get out on some bare grass. So I use a spoon and ground myself that way. Way. If you haven't learned of this technique, you can watch this video. Some other really good exercises are some gentle yoga. Yin yoga is a really great one to incorporate in this phase. Next week, we are actually doing a collaboration with a yoga teacher and she's going to be walking us through some breath work and yoga, some yin yoga poses. So make sure that you watch that. Lots of stretching, lots of gentle movement here. Whatever feels good and slow and restorative to you. After our period, we move into the follicular phase. This is the spring season. We're coming out of winter. We're coming out of hibernation. So that energy is going to be building in the follicular phase. I really like to emphasize to check in with yourself daily. If you're just coming into the follicular phase, you might still be feeling a little bit tired, a little bit sluggish. That's okay. Continue to listen to your body. Some exercises that I like to do in this phase is jogging, hiking, weightlifting as my energy builds. Consider a spin class or a dance class, something to get your body moving and up and out. From there, we move into the ovulatory phase, which is when we ovulate, obviously. <laughs> this is where our hormone levels are the highest. So probably you are going to have the most energy in this phase. This is when, for me specifically, I love weightlifting. This is when you might want to try to hit some PRs. You might want to up your weight. You might want to try a different workout regimen or different routine. This is also a really great time for a CrossFit class or some HIIT training. This is our summer phase. This is all about getting out, exploring, having fun, embracing that fire energy. And the fourth phase we move into is the luteal phase. This is a slow progression down, probably in energy. Our hormones were at their peak and now they're getting back down to eventually we're going to get into the menstruation phase again. So again, this I see as a very transitory stage. Listen to your body, check in with your body. I do continue to do some weightlifting in this stage, but if I feel tired or if I feel like I'm weak, I may take a yoga flow class. I might go hiking, swimming would be a great option. Getting outdoors would be really great. Some bike riding would be great. And towards the end, we can get back into that yin yoga and the walking. The biggest difference I have noticed in cycle syncing my workouts specifically is in my weightlifting. I feel like I have so much more energy when I'm at the gym. I don't feel like I'm dragging myself to the gym. Now we have to be honest with ourselves here because there's a difference between listening to our bodies and then just not moving at all. Notice in all stages, we can incorporate movement. If you're feeling tired, you don't have to push yourself to do something and get out and take a class or go to the gym or, or anything like that. But you can still incorporate movement into your lifestyle. And that overall is probably the most important piece in cycle syncing or your fitness journey in general is incorporating movement as a lifestyle, not just going to the gym one hour a day and saying that's it and then sitting on the couch the rest of the day and eating junk food. One of my biggest pieces of advice if you are feeling stagnant or not seeing results in your fitness journey is ask yourself how much you move. If you have an Apple Watch or you have a step tracker, see how many steps you take per day. Try and hit between 10 and 15,000 a day. Honestly, it may sound like a lot, but it's really just two, maybe 20 minute walks dispersed throughout all of your other regular stepping to the car and the grocery store and the office, things like that. Okay, so three tips that have so changed the game for me. Number one, it's okay to switch up your workout routine. If you're someone that loves weightlifting like myself, it doesn't mean that you have to weightlift every single day. Our bodies, our muscles need time to relax and rest and repair. And again, switching up your workout routine. If you're not weightlifting one day, 
Think about other ways that you can incorporate movement into your day. Think active rest day, okay? We're still being active. Number two is listen to your body. Honestly, your body knows best and it knows how to produce the best results. When we listen to our body, to our intuition, when we pay attention and honor what we're feeling each and every day, you will see the best results. And sometimes listening to your body does mean not going to the gym even though you want to. And number three, do what you enjoy. Just because I gave some examples does not mean that you have to do all of these types of exercises. What do you enjoy? That's probably one of the biggest lessons that I learned from starting my fitness journey is when I was in college, I thought that I had to kill myself with cardio and I thought I had to do all of the workout machines and I've really found a routine that I absolutely love that I look forward to. And if you are forcing yourself to do these exercises or to do these specific workouts, but you really don't want to, one, it's really hard to stay consistent consistent and disciplined in that because you're dragging yourself to things that you don't enjoy. And two, you're just not going to see the best results because you're not having fun with it. You're not passionate about it. Find what you're passionate about. For now, it might just be walking and that's okay. Like I was saying in the beginning of this video, we're cyclical. It doesn't mean that you will never like bike riding or hiking or weightlifting. You might like that in a couple of years and try that out, but for now, play around with it, have fun. My invitation is to try this cycle syncing maybe two or three months because you have to give it time to adjust and get into it and get into the habit, blah, blah, blah. And just pay attention to how you feel. It's not so much about our outward appearance and our outward changes. How are you feeling inwardly? What's your energy level like? What's your mood? What are your emotions? How's your anxiety and stress levels? Thanks so much for watching guys. I'll see you next week for yin yoga. Bye.